भारत के ऋषि मुनियों ने दुख से ग्रस्त संसार के लोगों को बताया कि केवल ग्रस्त आश्रम में ही अपने जीवन का सारा समय नष्ट न करें वे ग्रस्त सन्यासी बने संसार के अधिकतर लोग यही कहते हैं कि संसार के काम हमें ध्यान करने की फुर्सत नहीं देते जो जिम्मेदारियां हैं वो हमें ध्यान के मार्ग पर बढ़ने नहीं देते लेकिन ग्रस्त सन्यासी होने का अर्थ ही यही है कि आप दोनों के बीच में एक समन्वय एक तालमेल एक हारमनी बिठाएं और इसके अनेक उदाहरण हमें अपने आसपास देखने को मिलते हैं भारत के वे ऋषि जिन्होंने वेद लिखे वे सभी ग्रस्त सन्यासी थे तो आज ऐसे ही एक महान ग्रस्त सन्यासी से मैं आपका परिचय कराने जा रहा हूं जो परम ऐश्वर्य के स्वामी हैं फ्रांस के निवासी हैं नाम है मिलोवन स्टेन को संसार का हर ऐशो आराम उनके पास है लेकिन उसके बाद भी वो ध्यान के मार्ग पर पिछले तीस वर्षों से लगातार चल रहे हैं और पिछले छब्बीस वर्षों से लगातार भारत में आकर एक महीने तक हिमालय में रहकर घोर तपस्या करते हैं ध्यान करते हैं ध्यान लीन रहते हैं और भारत के जो एक योगी हुए हैं महेश योगी उनके ये शिष्य रहे हैं तो आइए इनके विषय में कुछ और जानकारी और उसके बाद भारत के अंदर जब भी ये आते हैं तो अनेक ज्ञान के पिपासु इनसे प्रश्नोत्तर करते हैं बातचीत करते हैं तो इनके विषय में जानकारी के बाद एक छोटा सा वीडियो उस प्रश्नोत्तर से भी हमने लिया है आइए मिलोवान स्टैनकोव इज अ सिटीजन ऑफ फ्रांस ही इज अ यूनिक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ योगी इन होम वन फाइंस अ परफेक्ट फ्यूजन ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड वैदिक नॉलेज हिज एनिगमैटिक लविंग प्रेजेंस इज अ डिलाइट फॉर ऑल मिस्टर मिलोवान स्टैनकोव serves as R&D director and general advisor at NG Biotech moreover he was founder president and chief executive officer of Veda Lab France he is a biologist immunologist along with all these milovan is a great yogi who is highly passionate about himalayas he treks till tapovan in the core of himalayas which is considered as a magical home of ancient sages every year for deep meditation for the last 25 years 2018 was his silver jubilee year today is 4th june 2019 like every year his friends in delhi invite him to feel blessed in his company and seek spiritual wisdom fundamental question that uh, arise uh, at one point in, in your life so uh, let's first define what is the truth only say the truth we are thinking about supreme truth and there is few things that we can say about it and the first one is the truth is not created. Do you agree? Truth is yes. not created. Not created. Yeah. Since it is not created, could not be destroyed. Do you agree? So this is the 
<coughs> main features of the truth that we are going to see what this truth is and how we are related to this truth. So the main basic and fundamental feature of the truth is that it is not created and if it's not created it could not be destroyed. And uh, since this is so, how we are, uh, and this truth is obviously omnipresent, and because if it's omnipresent, it must be here, right now. <laughs> you agree? <coughs> So you have to go slowly and realize this thing. So, so the truth is absolute, omnipresent, and is right now here, in this very moment. So, be, is this is so? Why we are not uh, realizing the truth? And now we are going to go little by little to draw your attention to that reality, that that reality is you, and that, that reality is right now here, <coughs> and now. You don't need to go somewhere to find the truth. It would not be in some other time, after life or <laughs> whatever, because it is right now and right here, and you have to experience and you have full rights to have its experience now. Because the truth is uncreated and undestructible, and because it is omnipresent, that mean it means it is unavoidable. You could not avoid the truth. Because it is right now here. You can't avoid it and also you can't escape it. <laughs> it is uh, <laughs> unavoidable and it is unescapable. So we are all in the, that truth. We are all in that reality which has not been created. It is very strange. <laughs> it is very strange but uh, if you really feel it, then you just can say, yes, it is so. Because it is so, that means it is undisputable. You can't dis dispute it, because uh, it is uncreated. To dispute it, you have to create. <laughs> and everything that is created can be disputed. But something that is uncreated will not be disputed. <laughs> So it is, uh, that truth is uh, unavoidable, it is unescapable, it is not corruptible, you can't corrupt it, and you can't dispute it. Is it clear? Mm. If you remember just this, what we said, and keep this present times to time, every day, you'll be slowly going towards that truth that we are going to discover more and more <laughs> during this short session but it's very powerful session so if this is so what we can do about we have defined the truth we have seen that we can't escape it we can avoid it we can dispute it we can't corrupt it. Is there anything that we can do about it? We can do two things. We can cognize it. Sorry? Make it. We can cognize it. Mm -hmm. Reali realize it. Sure. Cognition. Okay. We can cognize it. And if we cognize it, we can use it. So this is the only purpose of the truth. If you don't cognize the truth, 
if it's not of no use for you. For your life is useful only what you cognize as a truth. Right now, right here, in your lives, you are living upon your cognitions, whatever they are. And these cognitions are foundation of your life and of your decisions. And if your life is successful or not successful, it's you have not to blame nobody, you have to blame your cognitions and how you use these cognitions. Do you follow this? Yes. It's, it's clear, it's simple? Yes. yes. It's very simple. <laughs> it's very simple. So the, the only two things you can do about the truth and how you are bind, bound to the truth is just to cognize it and uh, use it. But this is the our problem. We are not cognizing it, the supreme truth and we don't know how to use it because we are not cognizing it. So it is right here, it is right now, but we are not seeing it. We are blind. <laughs> you realize that? You agree? Is everything clear? Yes. <coughs> So why it is so? So let's see where is the problem. Our, our problem is in our existence and the way how we live our lives. So everybody has a different experience of life. And what is common to lives of everybody we can define life as a series of experiences. You agree? Yeah. Yes. Since you know yourself as you are since very early, two, three, four years of age, since you know you, until today, you can just see the series of experiences year after year, year after year, until today. Since this morning to this very moment, you have gone through different series of experiences with the traffic <laughs> and the noise and the quarrel and the people, everything. So the life is a series of experiences. And in that series of experience, there is a two things. There is experience, and there is a seer of experience, witness of experience. You understand? Sakshi. Since you know yourself, you are witnessing how the series of experience you have gone through. So you existed and you exist and you are going to exist through the series of experiences. So there is an existence of experience and there is a awareness of experience. What is experience? Experience by definition is awareness plus object is experience. Awareness plus object. plus object of awareness is experience. Okay? It's clear? So basically we have existence. We're now going to define these two terms. Existence and experience. And how they are related. And we're going to see how this is going to lead us to the ultimate truth. Existence term, existence, is coming from the root of exit. Exit. Getting out. If you look through your life, 
do you have impression that you have getting out of something? This debt that is getting out of something that is permanently exiting its pure existence. And that pure existence is exiting from appearance of existence in the name and form. So you are permanently through your, throughout your life gradually exiting from different names and forms. You have been in the form of the baby and then you have developed to the teen and young boy or girl and you have de developed, appeared as an adult and working is all just appearance. So this pure existence is exiting constantly from name and form. So this is your essence is pure existence. And you are at the same time you are witnessing, having experience, you have been aware of the object from all these different steps that you have exiting through name and forms and we are going now to define what the term experience experience we said is awareness plus the object you have been always having awareness plus object you as an object as a young boy baby a young boy so on today and this is experience experience means Expiring. Expiring. Which were the meaning of experience? Yeah. The meaning of experience is expiring. So you have been witnessing how you are gradually expiring through your life. The baby has expired and appeared as a boy and girl. The boy and girl has expired and appeared. <laughs> as the adult and so on. So, the witness, the awareness is permanently observing experience, expiring, sorry, expiring of the name and form. You are exiting from the name and form and you are observing, witnessing, you get it? So basically, your pure existence and your pure awareness, pure consciousness. Pure existence is manifesting as the name and forms and exiting from the name and forms as appearance. And pure consciousness as awareness is witnessing expiring of the names and forms. So, at the end, what is staying is pure existence and pure consciousness. Brahman Satyam. Pure existence, pure consciousness. What exists in reality is a pure existence <coughs> that appears as this universe, as Jagat. Jagat Mitya. Brahman Satya is a reality, pure existence, pure consciousness. Jagat Mitya is appearance of pure existence in different names and forms, including our lives, including this whole universe. And that pure existence, that pure consciousness, is Brahman and it's you. Jiva Brahmaeva Napara. Is what you know, know from your books, but you never implemented. What does it mean really for you? <laughs> so this is how we have, uh, in a very simple and very condensed way, explained 
what is the truth, absolute truth, how you related to that truth, and how here and now, right now here, you have to realize, cognize that you are this truth. And if you keep this as a cognition, then you can make a use of it in your life. Then foundation ground for your life and will completely change. Now you are living on the basis of different cognitions which are limited, which are corru corruptible, which are modifiable, <laughs> can do twisted any way you want it. But if, and this is changeable ground of your life that you have so far. But now if you have this solid foundation as a cognition for your life, so your life is going to have <coughs> a new dimension. Now you are framed, time framed by human cognition as individuals, individual, uh, samsara with karma, samskaras, and all these things. So you are limiting, you are squeezed down to the human time frame because your cognitions are on that level as a human being. But if you realize that truth, absolute truth, that we have just explained, then you will get a frame, time frame of Brahman and beyond Brahman, Brahma. Brahma is related just with this creation and the ultimate truth is not created. So everything is in your consciousness. Everything happening in your life is happening into your consciousness. You understand? And this consciousness is unchangeable. As we said from the beginning, the ultimate truth is not created. It's undestroyable. So you as a pure consciousness are not created, undestructible and the solid foundation for your lives to manage appearance of you and to that pure existence. Pure existence, pure consciousness. Pure existence exists as a pure consciousness and pure consciousness witnesses pure existence. I repeat this again and if you repeat this to get <laughs> to get real uh, meaning and enlivening that value in you, this will already help you a lot. Pure existence exists as a pure consciousness, and pure consciousness witness pure existence. That means in everything you do, you exist as a pure consciousness. In everything you have to see pure existence as a pure consciousness and in everything you have to witness pure existence, not name and forms. In any name and form you have to see the pure existence. Any question? It's simple, it uh, may be uplifting, maybe shocking. I don't know. Sometimes people say this it's shivering. <laughs> but this is what Babaji is teaching you if you go to the top of it's exposing you to that. And it's right now and right here available for all of you. You are already that. You can't escape. You can't resist. You can't avoid it. You have just to 
recognize it and use it. And how then, when you have all this, how you are going to live? Then it's giving you absolute freedom. Freedom, Jiva Mukti. <laughs> You're free <laughs> from your appearance. You're free from bondage of birth and death. You're going beyond that as absolute being. To be not afraid of anything. And this, in fact, is love. Love is giving you three things. First is uh, you're not afraid. You go beyond being afraid. There is no any, any feeling of afraid of what, because there's only you. You can't be afraid of yourself. And then it's giving you freedom, and you are giving freedom to everybody. You are free from everybody, and you are giving the from yourself. You are giving the freedom to everybody, and this is is not conditional freedom. It's, it's not conditional love. Love that is very much used in nowadays is more trading. I love you. You love me. And there is a kind of contract. <laughs> so, but this knowledge, this cognition is giving you this ultimate freedom. That you are free from everybody and you are freeing everybody from you. This ultimate love, ultimate freedom. And third thing is not causal. Causal. Love is not has no cause, cause. Love has no cause. Like the children, they are playing and d doing the things without any reason, without any cause. Mm. They are laughing or doing things or sending the messages mm. <laughs> to unknown <our> people. <laughs> there is no cause, there is no effect. So this kind of truth is liberating you from cause effect is this samsara. This samsara that you are living is cause effect and transaction transaction. You're all the time in transaction with everything. There is cause and there is effect. This truth is liberating you from all of this and giving you freedom to enjoy all this life. You can still be in name and form. You're not going to lose this. <laughs> You're not going to lose your house and your car and <laughs> everything, your wealth, everything would be there. But you'll be laughing and enjoying uh, the cause effect uh, situation in, in your life. And is uh, requiring just uh, understanding. It's not belief system, it's not a religion, it's just you have to understand what you have already gone through. It's your, your life, you have right to understand it and cognize it and create foundation of your life the way you want it. So understanding is the basic. You can follow your religious lights and beliefs and Bhakti, and whatever you are doing is completely fine. Nothing wrong with that. But this is also part of that condition. Understanding is essential. You have to understand before you implement something. <laughs> so, uh, if you understood this, this if it's going to do something good for you, it's for you. <laughs> If you don't understand, you can ask a question. Thank you so much. <laughs>